Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and in this tutorial, I'll show you how to take great looking photos of fireworks in five easy steps. Fireworks photography is very much like home baking with rules to follow for the best results. In this tutorial, I'll share my easy recipe, which I've used for all the photos I'll show you here, and I'll also throw in some handy bonus tips. So whether it's New Year, Independence Day, Bonfire Night or any other celebration, you'll know exactly what to do when those fireworks start to go off. For more detailed instructions, including specifics on capturing Disney's Epcot and Magic Kingdom displays, check out my in-camera photography book. Links below. OK, on with the tutorial. Step 1. Composition. Find a good position with an unobstructed view of the sky where the action will take place, and preferably where you can avoid knocks and bumps from passers-by. Before the show starts, try to find out where the rockets will actually launch from to give you a head start on composing the shot. If it's a show over water, look out for anchored boats as a clue. As for the composition itself, don't neglect the surroundings. Try to include some scenery, whether natural or man-made, to give the photo context, and if it's taking place over water, consider using reflections as they can look really great. Do watch out for overhead cables in the sky though. In terms of lenses, unless you're really close or far, I'd suggest using a general purpose zoom, starting wide at the beginning of the show to ensure you don't miss any action, then consider perhaps zooming in a little later if desirable, although do watch out for focusing differences, which I'll mention in a moment. I normally shoot fireworks in the tall or portrait orientation to give them more room on the frame. Step 2. Keep steady. I'll discuss exposures in a moment, but in general most of my best fireworks shots have used shutter speeds of around 2 to 4 seconds. While a handful of the best stabilisation systems will let you hand hold these kind of exposures, most cameras would suffer from pretty noticeable camera shake with wobbly firework trails as a result. So unless you definitely know that you and your camera can hand hold these kind of exposures, the answer is of course to use some kind of support, most obviously a tripod, but don't forget you could also exploit a handy ledge or fence. If you're using a phone, there's lots of accessories that can support it. Don't forget to disable stabilisation though, as when using a tripod or stand, it can sometimes mistakenly introduce some wobble. Step 3. Stay focused. Most cameras don't stand a chance at auto-focusing on fireworks once they get started, so manually focus your lens on a far-off subject that will be at a similar distance, like a tree, a building or a street lamp, before the show begins, and try not to touch the focusing from this point onwards. Owners of mirrorless cameras beware, some models when they go to sleep or power down actually reset their focusing distance, so either disable this option in the menus or keep your camera awake by regularly half pressing the shutter release during the show. It greatly helps to practice all of this during daylight before the show begins so you're familiar with all your settings. Oh, and beware, if you are using a zoom lens and adjust the focal length you will almost certainly need to refocus. Step 4. Exposure the combination of dark skies and bright explosions presents a challenge to auto exposure systems, so either try out a dedicated fireworks scene preset, which should also lock the focus for you, or set your camera to manual exposure and take control yourself. I start off with the following settings in manual, then refine them during the show as required. First, set your camera's sensitivity to the minimum ISO value, typically between 100 and 200 ISO. Next, adjust the lens aperture to f8, then set the shutter speed to 4 seconds. As the show progresses, play back your first images to see if the brightness and the length of the trails are looking the way you'd like them. To adjust the brightness of the trails, simply adjust the aperture. Larger F numbers, close down the aperture, let in less light and make the trails darker. Smaller F numbers, open up the aperture, let in more light and make the trails brighter. Meanwhile, the shutter speed defines the actual length of the trails, with longer shutter speeds lengthening the trails and shorter shutter speeds shrinking them. Most of my example photos here use shutter speeds of 2 to 5 seconds and apertures of f8 or f11. It's all about refining and repeating until you get it right. Oh, and unless you want to illuminate someone or something nearby in the foreground, it's best to turn your flash off as it will have no effect on distant subjects and could fool your camera into using too dark an exposure. Step 5. No wobbles. You may be using some kind of support, but if you push the shutter button by hand, you still risk some shake. So when the action kicks off, trigger the shutter with a cable release accessory, a phone app if your camera has Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, or a two-second self-timer as soon as you hear the rockets being launched, and hopefully they'll explode in your frame while the shutter is open. Then refine and repeat. Once your settings are working as desired, I often just trigger the camera while enjoying the show with my eyes. A quick tip. Most cameras automatically apply long exposure noise reduction for exposures of one second or longer. 
This takes an additional exposure, blasting exactly the same length as the first one, but without any image data. The idea being that this dark frame can then be used to subtract any electronic noise from the first. It can certainly be an effective technique for reducing noise, especially on smaller format systems, but it obviously delays when you can take your next shot. Think about it. If you're using a four second exposure, then long exposure noise reduction is gonna take another four seconds to process that image. And during that time, there could be some amazing fireworks going off and your camera is locked, preventing you from taking any more pictures. It's especially frustrating as you approach the finale of a show. So most firework photographers disable long exposure noise reduction from the camera menus so they never miss a moment. Believe me, it won't significantly impact the quality. And that's all there is to it. Pretty simple, right? Obviously, as the show progresses, you may want to fine tune your composition to make sure that the fireworks are actually exploding in the position of the frame where you want them. And you'll almost certainly have to adjust the exposure. This is easy though, just remember if you want brighter trails, open the aperture using a smaller F number, and for darker trails which retain their colour better, just close the aperture with a bigger F number. And if you want longer trails, use a longer shutter speed, and if you want shorter trails, use a shorter shutter speed. And while it's nice to have some great firework photos in your collection, it can also be fun to record some video too, especially as you can leave it running in the background while you enjoy the show with your friends and family. You'll be using shorter shutter speeds for videos, so you may need to open your aperture or increase the ISO sensitivity to balance the exposure. But again, it's a case of experimenting. And remember to lock your focus manually in the distance or the video will be spoiled by constant hunting. If I've helped you grab the shot that you've always wanted, don't forget you can support my work or help keep me warm on those cold winter nights shooting fireworks outside by treating me to a coffee or joining my Patreon. There's links below and please don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of my future tutorials or camera reviews. Once again, if you'd like even more information on fireworks and long exposure photography, check out my in-camera photography book, which also includes great detail on the Disney Park shows. Again, there's links to everything below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.